him uh, uh, Reverend Sam Monsami, and uh, I consider myself one of the pioneers of Lanesha. In fact, there were many other people who came there about the same time. And uh, we look back to s today, especially now during uh, this time when we celebrate the 16th of uh, June, we think of all the suffering and the struggle and the trauma, you know, that took place during this time. <laughs> what I vividly remember is from Lanasia, looking across to Soweto, we saw the smoke of Soweto rising. It was very fearful, very scary to think what was happening uh, to our people in South Africa at that time. I'd like to tell you why we chose this name. The 17th suitcase for this book was because um, when traveling those days and even now on an overseas flight they normally allowed you two bags, two cases and we were eight of us so we had 16 cases, regular ones to carry and then of course at that time we were very concerned that we're coming to Western country, the United States, far away from South Africa. And one of the things that we so much loved was our food, you know, uh, our curry and rice and our spicy food. So we decided that uh, we'll take the 17th suitcase, which was the smallest one, but we made sure we stuffed it with all kinds of uh, spices, uh, masalas, you know, and uh, that also reminds us of the fact that our people came from India and one of the main things they brought from India must have been their spices uh, that uh, they introduced even to South Africa. So this is a wonderful re remembrance and also uh, the name we are very happy uh, that we chose this name because I think it's a very suitable name uh, for this book. Well, hello there, uh, Lens TV. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to keep my mask on because uh, if this coronavirus can travel through the phone screen or not. But anyways, just wanted to greet you guys from Oakland, California to our homeland in South Africa to the town of Lanasia where we were born and raised. Uh, where my mom and dad were both part of the first 50 families moved into the military camp uh, in Lanasia. Uh, we want to thank Abdullah for giving us, our family, this opportunity to share our story uh, that we recently published in the book, The 17th Suitcase. Uh, we hope that these stories will be an encouragement and also I think many of you will find a resounding uh, similarity. Those of you who lived through apartheid in South Africa, uh, uh, and also we hope that um, it will give people hope. As we left South Africa, we thought we were leaving apartheid. We thought we were leaving racism behind us, coming to the United States. And we realized that racism is still very much alive. It's still very much, uh, uh, we still experience it here in, 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 in California. And uh, as you can see by the recent events that have happened in the news. Uh, so we hope uh, that these stories will give people hope and give people um, perseverance to push through and to continue to to to, to fight for the rights of people uh, both here and in South Africa and throughout the world. All right, thank you very much. I'm Suman Sami, formerly from Sapphire Town. Um, we were moved during the Group Areas Act to Lanasia, uh, and of course some people, a lot of people to Soweto and also to um, 
I guess many other areas, people that are my age can remember during those times, the unrest. But we were moved into the Lenz military camp. And we were there in Lenz. It wasn't known as Lenasia, but Lenz during that time. We were there for quite a few years and then uh, moved to the United States. And in the United States, we've been here for about 34 years. And my family decided to write this book. Um, it was uh, a wonderful um, time because it got us to really, my story was uh, difficult to tell. And it was during this time that I had to really dig deep and tell the story just as it is. And I want to encourage people out there, young people especially, you have amazing stories and you will be able to put it down on paper. And one day we get to read the stories that you put down on paper. It may not be easy, but I tell you, it brings healing and also many other people will be encouraged by the wonderful stories. Hi everybody, my name is Nolene Monsami and um, I went to Zodiac Primary School before we left South Africa in 1985. And my name is Sushila, I'm the second in the family and uh, I just wanted to tell you all that uh, the town of Lanasia is very dear to us, Lens as um, we know it. Um, I was, um, I went to Alpha Primary School, I went to Lens High School, so we have a lot of friends out there and um, it was many years ago but it will always have a special place in our, heart, our hearts actually. So um, I wanted to tell you what Black Lives Matter means to us um, and this movement and first of all I just want to say that we are no experts on the subject at all. We still have a lot to learn um, but I think what we do know is that racism is systemic. Um, it's ingrained in our structures and in our society. Um, everywhere across the world. It's a pandemic, just like COVID is a pandemic. Um, and in our experience, um, you know, there were eight of us uh, that moved to the US in 1985, uh, but now with the in-laws and the grandkids, there's altogether 17. Um, so an inside joke with our family is that nobody else is allowed to get married or have any kids. Otherwise we have to write the 18th suitcase. <laughs> Um, but uh, just from our travels, we've traveled, you know, not all over the world, but here and there, uh, but based on our travels and our experience, we know that racism exists everywhere. Um, there's, you know, varying degrees, varying levels, and it doesn't matter if you're in a free country or not. Um, you know, racism is a sin and sin exists, exists everywhere. So we can expect that um, it will rear its ugly head no matter where you go. Um, and it's important that we understand and recognize, uh, can recognize when it happens and be prepared for it and uh, know how to address it, you know, learn about it. Um, you know, read, uh, you know, from, from our experience growing up, my parents always taught us um, that God created us all equal. And so um, we need to learn to love each other, respect each other and try to fight it um, whichever way we know how. The people united will never be defeated. 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 Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm one of the daughters in this large family. And if you consider yourself an aspiring young author, uh, congratulations, you've taken the first step. Um, in the foreword, we write about how my dad was an avid reader. Um, he wrote stories on a secondhand uh, typewriter from the time he was young. Um, whenever he spoke or wrote, people always asked him where his book was um, and how they could get a copy of it. And so it felt really natural for us, uh, for him to be called an author. My mom um, didn't 
write as much, but she uh, told riveting stories around the kitchen table that um, captivated us um, all our lives. Uh, for us, we didn't feel as much as authors, but as we compiled our parents' stories, uh, we felt inspired um, to add some of us, add some of our own, um, and we learned a few things along the way. So a couple of things I would like to say to you is, uh, the first thing is just start. Um, don't worry about having it perfect. Um, just go ahead and get your thoughts down onto paper, on your phone, uh, on a computer, um, and don't worry about it being perfect just as long as everything is down. Um, and then you don't want to leave it like that. You want to go back um, and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite until you're happy uh, with the, whatever it is you want to you want to share. Um, and then. I would say your next step would be to find a friend, a family member, a teacher maybe, somebody that would be willing to give their time to maybe um, read it as well um, and give you feedback and just be open to their feedback. You don't have to use all of it uh, because sometimes people might not understand the point you're trying to get across, uh, but really just be open to uh, what people are, are hearing because sometimes they might be reading something that you don't intend to write. Um, so definitely be open to their feedback um, and keep in mind, as I said earlier, about rewriting and rewriting. Uh, basically, with writing, you're never done. Um, and so every time, even though our book is published, we'll look at it and say, oh, we should have changed this and we should have written this in this way. Um, and that's actually fine. Um, you want to just be comfortable with the fact that you can always and always uh, improve uh, and correct and edit um, and rewrite. Um, so all the best. Um, just uh, feel confident in your abilities, uh, especially South Africans, particularly South Africans of color. Uh, we have so much uh, with the history of apartheid. Um, we have so much to give to the world, uh, particularly at times like these. And um, you, your parents, your grandparents uh, might have made it through some unbelievable, uh, remarkable, some sad, um, some not so sad, some funny maybe um, experiences. And I think that it's really important to share because uh, I think that we have a really powerful message to share. Thank you. everybody I'm Ursula and I attended Alpha primary school when I was little and then went to Lenzai for my high school and finished long time ago in 1984 and so I just wanted you to know that if there's any public libraries or school libraries that would like a copy of our book please send us an email to munsamifamily1 at gmail.com send us your name your phone number and your email address and that way we can um, get that to you My name is Priscilla. I'm the oldest of the six siblings um, from the 17 suitcase and I'm here today to just let you know where um, to find the book if you're interested in um, getting it. Uh, right now it is available on Amazon.com. It takes about a week, um, sometimes a little bit longer <clears throat> to South Africa. Uh, thus far we've had quite good experience with, um, with shipping over there. So thank you so much for having